Hello hockey fans, Oddman Rush here and welcome back to another video. During his 23 year NHL career, Ron Francis was one of the most consistent and most productive skaters to have ever played the game. After all, the guy scored at well over a point a game for much of his career, he won back to back championships during this span, and he's the fifth highest scorer in NHL history at the time of this recording. The guy produced a legendary career, and then some. Though he has clearly left his mark on the history books, and though he is one of the greatest players the league has ever seen, many people seem to forget about him, as Francis is often sidelined when discussing the GOATs of the National Hockey League. But why is this? Why is Francis overlooked so often, and why should people put more respect on his name? Well, let's look at his career in a little more detail and try to find an answer, shall we? This is the story of Ron Francis, the most underrated player in NHL history. The fourth overall pick of the 1981 NHL draft by the Hartford Whalers, Ron Francis would immediately join the Whalers roster for the 81-82 NHL season, where the 18-year-old lived up to expectations straight away thanks to potting 25 goals and 68 points in just 59 regular season games. Following his strong rookie year, Francis wouldn't take long to kick his game up a notch, as he morphed from a productive teenager to an integral piece of Hartford's roster seemingly overnight. After all, the former fourth overall pick would register 90 points in 79 games during his sophomore 82-83 season, he notched 83 points in 72 games during the following 83-84 season, and he would pot 81 points in 80 games during the 84-85 season too. Unfortunately though, these high scoring seasons wouldn't translate to postseason success, as Hartford weren't exactly the greatest team at the time and they failed to reach the playoffs in each of these seasons. Despite failing to make his postseason debut nearly half a decade since joining the league, Francis had made his mark and then some. As he had become a vital member of the Whalers roster, he had earned his first trip to the NHL All-Star Game in 1983, and he had registered 322 points in his first 290 regular season games. Not bad for a 22 year old in the best league in the world, eh folks? Having lived up to the hype since his selection at the draft, and having become a sizeable presence in the Whalers locker room, Francis would soon receive quite the honour, as he was named captain of the Whalers roster before the 85-86 NHL season began. With the C now firmly on his jersey, and with him becoming one of the youngest captains in NHL history at the time, Francis would continue to lead by example, cementing his reputation as a top producer for the Whalers while he entered his mid-twenties. For example, the forward potted 77 points in 53 games during the 85-86 season, and 93 points in 75 games during the 86-87 season. He then registered his first year at under a point a game with 75 points in 80 games during the 87-88 season, before bouncing right back with 77 points in 69 games during the following 88-89 season. Not only would he score 322 points in only 277 games since being named captain, and not only would he earn another trip to the NHL All-Star Game in 1985, Hartford would start winning hockey games too. In fact, the Whalers would punch their ticket to the playoffs in each of these years, where Francis continued to take charge by potting 16 points in 26 total postseason games, but Hartford would reach the second round just once during this span. At least they were making it to the dance now, that's quite the improvement compared to years past, you know? Having helped the Whalers become a consistent playoff competitor, Francis would somehow take his game to even greater heights, as the forward would explode on the score sheet during the 89-90 NHL season by potting an impressive 32 goals and 101 points in 80 regular season games, marking the first time that he had reached the 100 point plateau during his 9 year NHL career. 
However, after scoring 76 points in his first 67 games of the following 1991 NHL season, and with the Whalers having won just 28 of their first 68 contests that year, Hartford traded Francis to the Pittsburgh Penguins on March 4th, 1991, as part of a blockbuster move involving six different players. So after being drafted by the team back in 1981, having spent nine and a half seasons on their roster, and having served as captain of the organization for six years, Ron Francis had left the only NHL team he had ever known and was now joining the Penguins. With this move, Francis left the Whalers organization, having set new franchise records in pretty much every single scoring category, thanks to potting 264 goals and 812 points in 714 regular season games. Sounds like his tenure in Hartford was pretty iconic to say the least. Following this trade, Francis would make the move to Pittsburgh and fit like a glove with his new side, as he potted 11 points in his first 14 games with the Penguins to conclude the year. That said, the newly acquired forward would really make his mark come playoff time, as Francis potted 17 points in 24 playoff games to help Pittsburgh go all the way and lift the 1991 Stanley Cup. So having been traded by the Whalers after almost a decade with the franchise, and having joined the Penguins for the final few weeks of the season, Francis had made an immediate impact for his new side, and he had clinched the first championship of his NHL career. That's how you make a first impression, folks. Now if you thought his debut was impressive, the following 91-92 season would blow it completely out of the water, as Francis became a key member of the Penguins, and then some. Though he scored at under a point a game for just the second time in his career, with 54 points in 70 games, the 29 year old would come alive come playoff time once again. With Penguins legend Mario Lemieux suffering a broken hand during their second round matchup against the Rangers, and with him missing half a dozen playoff games as a result, Francis would step in as the Penguins' new first line centre and rise to the occasion. Thanks to his 10 points in 5 games during Lemieux's absence, including a hat-trick in Game 4 against New York, and thanks to his 27 points in 21 playoff games that year, Francis would help the Penguins reach the promised land once again, as Pittsburgh swept the Chicago Blackhawks in the finals to clinch the 1992 Stanley Cup. So after failing to reach the conference finals during his nine and a half years with the Whalers, Ron Francis had just won back-to-back -back championships as a member of the Penguins. I think this trade worked out pretty well for him, don't you? The next three years of Francis's career would see the forward continue to play for the Penguins, where he would not only score at his usual consistent pace, he would wear a letter on his jersey as a leader of the roster. For example, the alternate captain of the team registered 24 goals and 100 points during the 92-93 NHL season, he scored 27 goals and 93 points during the following 93-94 season, and he would notch 59 points in 44 games during the lockout shortened 94-95 season too. In fact, Francis played so well during the lockout year that he would get his hands on several awards, as he won the 1995 Frank J. Selkie Trophy given to the league's best defensive forward, he won the Lady Bing Trophy given to the league's most gentlemanly player, and he won the NHL's Plus Minus Award thanks to his league-leading Plus 30 rating. Given that Francis was named interim captain that year, while Lemieux was sidelined with injuries, the forward had led by example, and then some. Despite this award-winning performance though, Francis and the Penguins were unable to reach the summit once again. Though Pittsburgh would reach the playoffs in each of these three years, and though Francis would score 38 points in 30 total games, the Penguins would fail to make it past the second round in any of these years. Not the results they would have liked, but Pittsburgh had lifted consecutive championships just a few years prior. It was time to let someone else win it, right? The following three years of Francis's career would see the forward remain with the Penguins and continue business as usual for his now long-time side. 
After all, the former fourth overall pick potted 27 goals and a career-high 119 points during the 95-96 NHL season. He notched 27 goals and 90 points in the 96-97 season, before registering 25 goals and 87 points as the newly named captain of the roster during the 97-98 season. Not only would these performances earn him his fourth and final trip to the NHL All-Star Game in 1996, and not only would he secure another Lady Bing in 1998, Francis and the Penguins would also reach the playoffs in each of these three years. Unfortunately, while the forward would score 18 points in 22 total playoff games, Pittsburgh would make it out of the first round just once during this span, where they eventually fell in the conference finals to the Florida Panthers. Once his contract with Pittsburgh had expired, and having turned 35 years old that season, Francis decided that it was time to make a move. Though he had potted 613 points in only 533 games during his time in Pittsburgh, and though he could have stuck around given his continued strong play, Francis returned to a familiar side instead as on July 13th, 1998, he signed a four-year, $20.8 million contract with the Carolina Hurricanes. So after spending seven and a half years in Pittsburgh, after winning back-to-back -back championships with the side, and after earning several individual awards during this tenure, Ron Francis had returned to his former franchise in their new Carolina home. It may have had a different coat of paint, and they may have played elsewhere in the country, but given that he still held numerous records with the Whalers Hurricanes franchise, Ron Francis was well acquainted with the team already. Having made the move to Carolina, Francis would spend the next half a decade with the Hurricanes, where he would further increase his various franchise records thanks to his impressive play during the later years of his career. For example, the forward scored a rather modest 21 goals and 52 points during his first year back with the franchise in 98-99. He returned to form with 23 goals and 73 points during the following 99-2000 season, and he notched a slightly reduced 15 goals and 65 points during the 2000-01 NHL season. He then rebounded with 27 goals and 77 points during the 01-02 season, before potting 10 goals and 30 points during the 02-03 season. Having potted 324 points in 404 games during this span, and having further cemented his place as the greatest player in Whalers Hurricanes history, Francis would also secure a few more accolades during these twilight years, as he won the 2002 Lady Bing Trophy as the league's most gentlemanly player, the third of his career, as well as the 2002 King Clancy Memorial Trophy, given for his significant humanitarian contributions to his his community. Considering that Francis had amassed an impressive trophy cabinet already, and considering that he had earned these new awards by producing strong numbers while in his late 30s, the old dog clearly had a few tricks left in him, didn't he? Not only would he play well during the regular season, Francis would also help Carolina make several trips to the Stanley Cup playoffs too. Though they would clinch a postseason berth three times in five seasons, and though Francis would score 17 points in 29 total playoff games, the Hurricanes would make it past the first round just once during this span. That said, Carolina went all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2002, and Francis potted 16 points in 23 games during that run, before the Hurricanes were eventually defeated in five games by the Detroit Red Wings. Ooh, so close yet so far. The 03-04 NHL season would see Francis suit up for the Hurricanes for his sixth year with the team, and though he had spent the last half a decade back with his original franchise, the forward wouldn't be there by the end of the year. Having scored 30 points in his first 68 games of the season, and with Carolina having won just 22 of their first 68 contests that year, Francis was traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs on March 9th, 2004, in exchange for a 2005 fourth round draft pick. So after joining the Hurricanes back in 1998, after spending five and a half seasons with the organization, and after further cementing his place as the franchise's GOAT, Ron Francis had been shipped off to Toronto to conclude the year with the Maple Leafs. 
With this departure, Francis had left Carolina as the greatest player the organization had ever seen finishing as the team's all-time leading scorer with an astonishing 382 goals and 1,175 points in 1,186 games. Scoring at pretty much a point-a-game pace for 16 seasons is a pretty incredible achievement, but doing so for a single franchise in the best league in the world is simply astounding. Oh, and Francis is still the only player in Whalers Hurricanes franchise history to have reached the 1,000 point plateau with the team at the time of this recording. You know you've left your mark when not even a single person has come anywhere close to your totals in the two decades since your departure, right guys? Having been traded to Toronto, Francis would spend the rest of the year with the Leafs, where he would make quite the first impression for his new side. After all, the 41-year-old scored 10 points in 12 games with Toronto to conclude the year, bringing his full season totals to 13 goals and 40 points in 80 regular season games. Pretty solid numbers for a guy in his early 40s, eh folks? Not only that, this late season surge would also help the Leafs punch their ticket to the 2004 Stanley Cup playoffs, where Francis registered 4 points in 12 postseason games as Toronto were eliminated in the second round by the Philadelphia Flyers. Not the ending they were looking for, but given that the Leafs wouldn't win another playoff round for the next 17 years, this performance was actually pretty decent in hindsight. Once his postseason run had concluded, and with the offseason well underway, Francis had a pretty big decision to make. Should he lace up his skates for one more season and try to win a third Stanley Cup championship, or should he call it a day on his career and retire from the league? Due to events well beyond his control though, this decision would be made for him instead, as the 2004 lockout cancelled the entirety of the 04-05 NHL season. With him missing an entire year of hockey through no fault of his own, and with him turning 42 years old in March of 2005, the forward decided that it was time to call it quits, as on September 14th, 2005, Francis retired from playing professional hockey. Having hanged up his skates for the final time, Ron Francis retired from the NHL having scored an astonishing 549 goals and 1,798 points in 1,731 regular season games, as well as 143 points in 171 playoff games too. In fact, these totals are so great that Francis currently sits second all-time in assists, fifth all-time in games played, and fifth all-time in points in NHL history, bested only by some of the greatest players the league has ever seen. They really don't make them like Francis anymore, do they? If these incredible milestones and his host of awards weren't impressive enough though, Francis's decorated career would also earn him some of the greatest honours a player could receive, as he had his iconic number 10 retired by the Hurricanes on January 28, 2006, and he was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame back in 2007. Having your jersey raised to the rafters and being welcomed to the hall sound like the perfect ending to me, folks. In the years after his NHL career, Francis would quickly transition to the league's front office, where he has produced quite the successful tenure in the two decades since. For example, Francis was hired as Carolina's Director of Player Development during the 06-07 season, and he served in various roles within the Hurricanes organization for the next eight years, before being promoted to Executive Vice President of Hockey Operations and General Manager of the franchise in 2014. From there, the Hall of Famer would serve in both of these positions for the next four seasons until his eventual firing in 2018, before being named the first general manager of the league's latest expansion franchise, the Seattle Kraken, a role he has held for the last five seasons and one he continues to serve at the time of this recording. So not only did he produce an iconic career as a player, Ron Francis has built quite the resume in the front office too. The guy just cannot stop, can he? 
Though he is seemingly forgotten by much of the league, and though he is often overlooked compared to his contemporaries, Ron Francis produced one of the greatest careers the National Hockey League has ever seen. I mean, the guy spent over two decades in the show, he was one of the most consistent players throughout this tenure, and he sits fifth all-time in points. Francis was a legend of the game, reputation or not. Add to that his two Stanley Cup championships, his various individual awards, his numerous accolades, and his lengthy front office career, and Francis has done more for the game of hockey than most people could ever dream of. He may not be seen as the best player ever, and he may have been overshadowed by other league legends, but if his resume doesn't show you just how incredible Francis was, I don't know what will. So put some respect on his name, folks. And on that note, I'm going to end today's video. That's the story of Ron Francis, and why he is the most underrated player in NHL history. What do you guys think about Francis's career? Do you think he is one of the more underrated players out there, or do you think that he is rated fairly compared to other league legends? Do let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys have to say. But thank you so much for watching guys, I really do hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Bexy93, Burned Retinas, Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, Raquel and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.